This is KBYP's seventh video on antenna and transmission line principles, where we throw out the amateur theory of inductance, capacitance, and such in antennas and go to waves. We, it, it's obvious that energy propagates through space in waves, otherwise we wouldn't have radio. They can do so without wires because it travels through space. But there has to be a clear demarcation between fields of an antenna the near fields and those fields from the antenna because the first one is not antenna the second one is we universally equate feed points with what we see on measuring equipment LC and R values but that is not antenna and those values don't have to be in an antenna the Fundamental quantities are L, C, X sub L, X sub C, and phase. Not counting resistance, because resistance has no frequency component. That's circuit theory. In circuits, the phase is a tangent, R tangent of X over R, where X is X sub L minus X sub C, as we saw in video 6. They effectively cancel. That's circuit theory, and that describes the phase relationship between voltage and current. Voltage is associated with the electrostatic fields and current with the electromagnetic. They're also associated with electrical and magnetic fields, but not, not in circuit form, not in circuits. With fields in wave mechanics, there can be electrical fields and magnetic fields, and they can vary in amplitude. And they can also have a phase relationship and a magnitude relationship similarly to circuits. It's the same kind of energy. It's just, it's just that the main difference is what we'll see in this diagram that shows the myth of where MVIS comes from with dipoles, for example. The myth on the left is that energy reflects from a dipole and goes upwards. That's pure BS. If you believe in MVIS, go read John Seybold, S-E-Y-B-O-L-D. He throws MVIS in the trash can. Signals do not reflect. There's nothing up there to reflect from. And there's no sunspot activity to cause an ionized layer. The atmosphere's dead, Jim. The fact is, as we saw in earlier videos in this series, that an antenna arm or any charged conductor exudes fields. And those fields are bounded between the antenna wire or the conductor wire and some other conductive or relatively conducting plane, in this case the ground. Those field lines go from one to the other. There's a force associated with a mechanical force and also a voltage. And you have to look at Maxwell's equations to understand or to calculate that. There's no reflection there. It's a coupling. When we had the uh, aluminized foil uh, icicles on a Christmas tree, that's not so popular today, but it was back in the decades ago. In the winter, when the air was dry, we'd walk towards the Christmas tree, hold out our finger, point our finger at the icicle, and the icicle would magically lift and point back at the finger. That's what's happening. The fields did not reflect. The fields acted to cause a physical force, but not, that's not field reflection. Reflection can occur with traveling electromagnetic waves. That's, a, that's an antenna principle, but that's with a traveling wave. There are, are texts that discuss that of fields impinging on a conducting surface and what they do. There's some reflection, there's some propagation along the surface, depending on the size of the surface. But the fields associated with currents on a wire do not reflect because they are bound to bound to charged particles. Q sub 1, Q sub 2. A charged particle for every field line. It violates the conservation of energy to say that that field can be reflected away off into the atmosphere, away from the charge. And this, this is a static system. This is just charge, 
charged particle is not particularly moving. When the charges are moving, there's also a magnetic field curling, but not in this diagram. But in conservation of energy, the charge, the charge Q emanates a field line which couples to the plane down below. The field line terminates on that plane. There's a voltage created between the two. No reflection. This is the point where we branch off into antenna physics. There are several phases, if you will. Not phase like that, but phases logically that comprise an antenna. Firstly, the feed point. The feed point is an electrical equivalent. We can connect the output of an amplifier directly to an antenna feed point with no networks or transmission lines. And that node is electrical. That is L, C, and R in phase. The second phase is exciting those two dipole arms by some mechanism, which causes fields to appear. And for there to be emission from the antenna, those fields are not moving because moving fields do not radiate. And that's the old myth from Maxwell's days. This totally destroyed amateur antenna theory. Fields associated with these charges do not radiate just because the charges are moving. Of course, if they're not moving, they can't radiate at all. If they are moving, there's both an E and an M field, but those are near fields, not radiated fields, or not emitted, not emission fields. If you read Engineer Dawson, IEEE paper on slant-fed antennas, he states that antenna currents cannot be sinusoidal, else they wouldn't radiate. And all of amateur antenna theory and most of EE theory is based on a false assumption that sinusoidal currents cause radiation. It's absolutely false. But going back to the problem that is caused with, with calculus and differential equations when we use anything but sine, just because we use incorrectly or make the assumption of using sine to analyze an increment of wire does not mean that is antenna action. That's simply associated with the local fields that are conserved to the antenna. Now there are field lines going vertically from the antenna that attempt to go to infinity, but they must be also infinitely weak at that point, else that would violate the conservation of energy. There's nothing here to create gain. So those fields are, they may try to extend to infinity, but they're very, very weak. So most of the field intensity is conserved between the antenna wire and ground. That's also related to the principle of shielding. Shield, shields are a two-edged sword. Yes, they keep fields in. Yes, they create greater field intensity. If you'll see my impedance matching experiment video, that's a principle I use to eliminate straight capacitance. I did not arrange conductors so they could communicate E-fields with the walls of the shield. I put them perpendicular. And that's advanced knowledge of fields and physics. In the latest edition of the IEEE Antennas and Propagation magazine, not the crap that ARL shovels out for money, but engineers, scientists, PhD level experts in the science of antenna antennas. And on page 61 of said publication, Everett Farr, 10 Fundamental Antenna Theory Puzzles Solved by the Antenna Equation. This is an interesting piece that relates the traditional antenna calculations that are all based on this rather incorrect principle of, of sine waves. See the, uh, the sine waves with the Ohm's Law relations in circuit theory to describe antenna function. But goes on to say that there is something beyond that, which is really antenna. And it's referred to as 
that h transfer function, Laplace transform of a transfer function. There is no circuit equivalence whatsoever that describes the antenna function. Not that it's complex, not that it's a very complicated LC circuit and can't be represented as a first order resonance. Not that it's difficult to describe. It's not a, con a matter of conditionality. There is no relation whatsoever between circuit theory and antenna operation. Because antennas are not circuits. See the, see the uh, front cover. Quantum electromagnetics technology. All of antenna theory has been thrown in the garbage can and replaced with something called QED, quantum electrodynamics. And again, it's, it's not that there's a difficulty relating. There is no relationship. There's something that happens in that transfer function that is black magic. And it is just now, just now, after the year 2000, or about, just now being understood, it is rooted in nuclear physics, extremely complicated physics. I'll describe to you in a next video of what's really happening and show a paper online you can get, IEEE paper, that's loaded with horrific math but shows the basic principle to prove it. But what's happening was not known until both the nuclear age, which began about the 1930s, but also until the quantum age, which is now. This is the February 2022 edition. This is groundbreaking research I just showed you, not ham theory. And the paper that I quoted or referred to with a nasty math that shows antenna operation was published October 2021. It's been since 1865 that people have been suffering under this grossly false illusion of antennas and sine waves. And again, all that's been thrown in the paper shredder and in the recycle bin. Every bit of it is false. Not conditional, but completely and absolutely false. Take the sine wave theories, take the NEC2 antenna analysis, and throw it all in the toilet and jiggle the handle. Because it is utterly, absolutely, completely, not just false, but not applicable. In the next video, I'll show you the principles, just basic common observations of dipoles that led me to discover this, these quantum principles, and then go find the literature to prove it. But we've begun that process here by reasoning that there's no such thing as reflection from a dipole. And if you'll think about principles of dipoles and how they're tuned very, very carefully, you might start to get a, a little bit of insight as to what's actually happening. Also, if you think of the arms as transmission lines, KB1P.